In this video, we're going to look at how to paint a particular breed of horse. In this case, it's an Appaloosa. Now I've got a couple of miniatures here. These are both from Reaper. This is actually a unicorn figure, but I've done a little conversion. I took away the horn, turned the uh, cloven hooves into just regular horse's hooves, and then it was ready to go, ready to be used as a horse. It's got a nice open surface, no saddles, no, no straps, no bridles, so that we can just focus in on the markings. And the colors, I've got some of those laid out here on the palette. And starting over on the dark end, got some black. This is a German camouflage, black-brown. A few reaper paints here. Muddy soil, which is not just a nice dark brown, but has a little bit of blue in it. Ashen brown, made in flash. So these these sets here, you're gonna see how they really work to make the markings, the mane. We've got kind of our overall bright highlight color here. This is ivory, which is sort of an off-white. It's not pure white. And then some specialty paints here. A couple of these are also from Reaper. This is called Brown Liner. And this is a nice deep dark brown. But the paint is a little bit thinner paint. So it's a very intense dark brown. But yet more like the consistency of ink actually. Then we've got a few other products here that we mix in with the paint. Flow Improver. This is really nice to keep your paint flowing well, but not necessarily get the watermarks. And just mixing in water will have. And I've got glaze medium. This is handy, say if you want to do some wet into wet blending in some of these areas here, especially along this border. Sometimes having a glaze medium keeps your paint wetter for longer, and you can do some of these smooth transitions with a larger brush. And now talking about brushes, we'll set some out and we'll discuss those and our palette. We have the colors out on the palette, arranged really more from darkest to lightest because we don't have a lot of warms and cools. This is kind of a limited palette exercise. Got a little uh, patch of the glaze medium over here, which we're going to use a little bit of. We've got the miniature and a used paint jar. It's magnetized, but I also have secured it with some blue tack just to make sure he doesn't fall off. So we've got a filbert and let's get down to it. So we know we want this lighter transition into darker on the front half of the horse. What I'll do is put this out on the palette and arrange kind of a little palette within a palette here. I've got some darker colors over here. Get some of that ashen brown. Here, more of just the ashen brown. You can see We've kind of created this color transition right here on the palette. And that makes it a little easier for me. 
is instead of having to constantly remix every time I go from the miniature to the palette, it's already it's already here. And if you use your glaze medium and mix it in with these, well now these are gonna stay wetter longer and they'll stay wetter for longer on the miniature. I'm actually gonna start with some of my lighter colors here on the back, but not our brightest. This looks relatively light. That's another reason why you'll see I primed this guy kind of a neutral gray. And that's, uh, that's what I tend to do with most of my miniatures. I actually use a brush-on primer. There's a number of reasons I do that. It uh, can save actually on cost because you're being a little more efficient with the application. You're not spraying half of it up into the air. It all goes exactly where you want it. And I can control exactly what color primer I'm using. I actually mixed a white and a black brush-on primer together. And I chose the gray because again, on this white palette, well, your white just kind of disappears. Here, this uh, muddy soil and the, what is this called again? I think it was called, okay, uh, ashen brown. Looks really dark here on the white. When we put it on this neutral gray, it doesn't look terribly dark at all. So it kind of cuts down some of those optical illusions that can be a little bit troublesome. You can see how already, even at this early stage, which I call the shaded base coat, we're already doing some blending. As I get into the front part of the tail here, I'm going to start a little bit lighter and introduce some darks. And you can see already using the big filbert brush with lots of paint in it, twisting the miniature around as I carry it up into this lighter color, it already it just it starts to blend by itself. Same thing down at the ends of the leg, down by the hooves. Introduce some of this darker color. Push it up into some of the lighter sections. And you can see I'm working pretty fast, a nice pace. And I'm also not just focusing on one part of the miniature. The last thing you want to do, especially when you want to get all these transitions, is to just get in here and only work on the face and finish this and leave nothing else. Well, you've kind of spoiled the whole reason for the gray primer and laying the colors out on the palette. You lose, you lose this comparison, this frame of reference. And on miniatures that are a little less wide open than this, that have all kinds of details stacked together, you also run into the issue of, well, you just painted the face, but now to get around it, to paint the whatever's next to it, now you end up messing up the face. But if you've done all of this kind of early work, like what I'm doing here, so let's say I'm doing this and this face is completely I go like this. Well, that's going to make you pretty sad, I think. And to keep from being sad, why not work on the whole thing equally? Working on every section about the same amount, not finish off one, work on everything all at once. Yeah, I'm trying to take advantage of this filbert brush. This whole notion of this rounded edge. Now, some of these have a little bit more of a round edge to them. So 
that'll help do even more of that feathering type of brush stroke. I actually call it an airbrush on a stick because it, it's amazing what you can do. You can see where my hand is on the brush. It's still still down on the end because I consider this still to be very early in the process. So I'm going to take away just a little bit more of the color. Pick out a few around the eye. I'll work up into, kind of creep up towards the shoulder area, but not quite get there. Constantly rotating this guy around. You could even just set it down on the palette. Spin him around. You know, all, all about promoting moving around the entire miniature. So say we're almost up to straight pale flesh. Well let's let's throw a little bit of the white, not a lot, a tiny bit of the glaze medium. Start to get some of the white in here. And this has some yellow in it. So that's gonna do is is sort of take our light colors away from that pinkish hue and neutralize that a little bit by adding a little bit of a yellowish tint. All the while I'm going to continue thinking, well let's not forget the tail here. So same thing, I'm just picking along that top edge but with a brush that has a healthy amount of pigment in it. You can carry this white as, as, as much as you want. And if you wanted it to be a little more towards the, the tannish gold, well, you, you could make it a little more yellow if you want. This is just, it's what I chose to do. See here again, I'm using just the very nature of this brush. keep these transitions going. Now, if there's a part, maybe there's some kind of weird thing about the sculpt or the cast and it's just impossible to get a transition that you think is smooth. Well, we are. Got all these spots on here. So why not think about, okay, if it didn't, if it wasn't very nice of a blend, you just put some spots in that area. You can see we started here, we worked our way all the way here, and it's and it's it's not taken that long. Because again, we're thinking about longer brush strokes, bigger brush, some wet into wet blending. We've kind of done a little bit of everything already. At a certain point, I kind of call a halt to the adding of all of these lights. And that's where we'll bring out, bring out our nice transparent washes and glazes. So here on the main, I feel like I want some lighter lights. And I can feel all right about this. If it gets a little too light in one area, well, that's what glazes are for. That's what tinting and shading is for. Essentially, it lets me knock it back down again if it's gotten too bright. Well, I'll use my glazes to make it darker. So here, see, I want to pick some light 
here because this is going to be a very, very dark area. So I want a little bit of light here so this comes forward. Now that the miniature is completely dry, we can focus in on doing some darker shading. And this is what I consider glazing. We've got these transparent colors that we're using. We've also got some of the brown liner paint. You can see this is kind of a warm, this is the warmest color we've got out here. Black is somewhat neutral, and this gives us kind of a more greenish brown. So between these three, that's what we're going to use to establish the darkest darks on the horse. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to use a slightly bigger brush for my glazing. I've got some really large areas here. I'm going to work with. So I'm going to set these aside. I'll probably have to put some more out as we move along here. What I want to do is mix some of these together. And I do this a lot with my glazes. And don't be afraid to mix them together. They're, they're paint just like everything else. If you can mix paint, you can mix your glazes. Let's start here down the end of this leg. And you can see I only move a certain distance up the leg. This is going to be more just pure black wash. Now what I can do is kind of rinse off the brush and carry this up and actually take some of it away. So we're not going to affect, we don't want to cover up all the, the light area that we spent so much time working on. This is all about shading and transitioning to this darkest shadow area all the while being aware of accessing some of these different colors that we've made. Try this on the other leg. Here I'm going to go with a little more of this warmer glaze. And we're going to leave that there. And I'm just going to take some of the black. So what happens is the two of them will just kind of mix together right here on the miniature itself. Same thing, getting rid of some of the glaze. You can also take your finger, do this. See here on, right on that bone, right there. It's just like when we were painting with the regular paint. Same thing, if you want to take some of that paint away, that's fine. Here on the inside, this is going to be more just the black. You've got the tail. I'm thinking just to have a little bit of a little less monochromatic, a little more color. I'm going to get more of the warm. And the same thing on this side. When you're working, especially a little more liquid this way, now you can sort of use, let's use a little gravity maybe. What's going to happen is it all wants to move this way. Well, good, let's help it. What I've done is I've got some water here. What it's going to do is pull, pull that wash color through, through those light areas. It's a little more subtle than down here, where we're going to kind of reverse course. And what gravity is going to do is take take this and pull it into a darker mix so we can 
mess with the gravitational constant of this miniature just by holding it one way or the other. So right away, let's say we get rid of some of, again, pull it away with your finger, dab at it with a paper towel. So I'm going to stop because I don't want to get too bogged down in the face. These were things that I knew I wanted to do. I'm going to go back to, back to this brush and let's work on some of the spots. Now the way these spots worked, I started first with a color that's not the darkest. See these spots along here? Well that's the color we're going to start with and then we'll add a darker dot inside the first dot. Which means those have to be a little bit wider and that's why I've got the ashen brown back out in the palette. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the black shade just to make sure I can keep this nice point here and let's let's do some uh, let's do some patterns here. Now if that's too dark, we can add some of the pale flesh and lighten that up just a little bit. And the important thing is keep some of these spots bigger, smaller. So we've got and do is we're going to arrange these also in, in clusters. There's a big one here and then a, kind of a cluster around that. And we're just going to move around, move around the figure here. Creating clusters, making sure they're still attached together. So just like before, a whole range of values and colors out there on the palette to choose from. So there's a bigger spot. Make a little cluster around that. And, and think lighter with these spots, not darker. Think lighter first, we'll make them darker in the next step. So here your spots should almost disappear. And everything, it's, it's kind of how all the, the value are, are, rel, are relative to each other. It's like this just looks, it disappears. But up here, it really stands out. It's the same color. And watch what happens. This is going to be very fun. As we get into our darker areas. The other thing this does is it makes your transition look smoother because now you have some some edges that are a little bit harder next to something that was comparatively very smooth. So some on the shoulder here, but now this is where I say I kind of go into the darker, darker still because, well guess what, we're working in an area that's darker. There's also not quite as many of the spots in this area. Now for some final details. We've got some of the brown liner and we still got some of the muddy soil. Still some of the black wash as well. I've got the liner brush and what we're going to do is these last little dots within the dots but this time it's going to be darker. So here we go. Get inside like so.
and we're just going to find each of these dots. Some of the inside spot I'm going to make a little bigger, like here. I want that to be a little larger here. It's going to be smaller, smaller. I might even put a few isolated dots that don't even have a color around them. And we'll just go work our way all around. This is mostly important on the back here, but not every spot. I'm going to leave, say this one, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put dark here, I'm going to put dark here. I'm going to leave this spot. I might even leave a couple other ones just isolated here and there that don't have that spot within a spot. There's some on the legs that I want to put on here, so let's... There was just wasn't many spots on the legs, so we'll throw some on there. And some of them might just be very dark, so that kind of... It, takes you down this transition in the leg. We'll put a few see, dark ones on the other side of the leg. And here I'm going to have, so there's kind of a, a blending of the lighter spots and darker ones together. Up here I'm going to leave these light ones and now put some dark spots, especially right along this border of the transition, right about there. Just let that go. A few on the neck. These will be very subtle. You won't see them very much, but see, because we have this middle tone and a highlight here, those darker spots actually show up in a few subtle ones, a few small clusters on the face. Swing this around to this side. Once again, working our way towards that transition. Doing clusters in the same way as we did, where it was light. Instead, darker spots. A few over the leg, a few here on the neck. A couple on the face, not many. Just a few, and again, they're, they're very subtle because of what is around. It's just, it's, we're putting a very dark on a pretty dark color, a mostly dark color. So when they look at it closer, they'll see them, but from a distance, the just it will, it'll blend in. And that's another, another way to add some interest to your miniatures is you, you let something, you give them something to look at from a distance, and then when they get really close to it like this, well, you give you give them a little more. When they look at it really close, they go, wow, I didn't see that from four or five feet away. 